few moments this evening. Amen. Once again, thank you for your coming together and working in unity. What God can do in our midst is we're unified. We've been very blessed. I just appreciate the journey that this church has been on. Uh, even in the time that I'm a pastor, uh, just seeing how we work together and uh, see what God can do as we work together. It's a blessing. And turn with me in your Bibles this evening to John, the Gospel of John, chapter number 1. Christmas, and uh, this week I guess we'll start uh, Cyber Week, where I'm not sure how it's Cyber Week, but it's already been online, and thank God for online, but uh, uh, I, I don't want to be caught up in things that I don't have, and the desire for those things, but really try to look at what we do have, really look at what Christmas is all about. And uh, I know that we'll talk about the nativity and all those things, but I like the way John presents. And so I want to look at that tonight. And so hopefully it brings us some, some uh, clarity to our vision of the Christmas season. John writes and he says, in the beginning, now this is uh, referring to not that God particularly had a beginning, but he was talking about the beginning of creation. God has always been, and he always will be, hard for our minds to quite sometimes grasp that concept because of our humanity. But God has always been, in the beginning, the Bible says, was the Word, or the eternal Logos. Did you ever have someone say something to you and maybe with good intentions they wanted to bring it to pass, but did not have the ability behind the words to bring to pass what they had spoke. Maybe we've done it ourselves, not intentionally, but because we had good intentions, but we just were not able to follow through on what we said. But when God's word is given, it is established in heaven. And it is an eternal word. It's not just something that, that, that reflects a moment or a temporary part of time. But God's word is eternal. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. Amen. And the word was with God. It had a relationship with God. And so John is giving us this introduction of God. He shows us God the Father. He shows us God the Son. That He is the Word. And then we know that the Spirit of God. Or God the Holy Ghost. Completes that. And the Bible says. And the Word was with God. Amen. He was God. And He is God. From eternity past to eternity future. Amen. The Word that is given in a manger. The Word of God. Amen. The Bible continues to say the same was in the beginning with God. Not just God, but God the Son was there. Manifest in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And all things were made by Him. Everything. Look around you. Everything that is was because of the conception that God gave it. Amen. God gave everything. You and I, everything that's in this building, everything that our eyes can behold, God is the orchestrator of it. He is the engineer. He's the developer. He's the one that brought it all together. Amen. 
uh, it, the same was in the beginning with God, and, uh, and, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made. There is nothing that is independent on its own. It, they, it needs God. You and I need God. Everything around us, Sister Dot, needs God. Amen. Think about that. That is a great big God we serve. Amen. Uh, the majesty of who He is. The Bible goes on down to say, In Him was life. Amen. Uh, Jesus is the Word. He is the Logos. But Jesus is life. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. John, he documented it in, in, in his entrance to his gospel. Amen. The source of life. He alone is the source of life. If no one knows Jesus, they don't know life. They're in darkness. The Bible says, and the light. So he's life, but he is the light shineth in darkness. He is the light because he is derived from life. Amen. And he drives out darkness. The Bible says, and the darkness comprehended, or we could translate it and say, apprehended it not, uh, meaning that, that, that as much as they tried to stop the light, they could not stop the light. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine trying to stop the light? I go to turn on the light in this building, uh, and you try to stop it. Uh, you could go through all types of measure, but you're not going to do it. Amen. You just can't stop the light. Amen. I need to tell you that we serve a God that was from the very beginning unstoppable and it continues to be unstoppable amen. praise God amen. amen how delightful is that tonight let's look at a few things so we're looking at uh, 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 the gospel the, the Matthew Mark Luke and John this grand finale of the gospels if you would and as we look at each one of them, and they are presenting the good news of Jesus Christ, and they're the ones that document and give to us uh, the birth and the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. After that, John will continue on uh, writing uh, 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 things, but, but, but particularly here, we find that these four Gospels give us Jesus Christ. But let's look specifically that these four Gospels give us the birth of Christ. Now Matthew, he was interested in the uh, of the legal aspects of Jesus' birth, so he looked at the genealogy of Joseph. You look at God, Matthew's gospel, and you find that the, the genealogy with Joseph is given. And then you look at Luke. Apparently, it spoke to people, and he gives us a genealogy much from uh, that of Mary, and, 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 and uh, the genealogy of Jesus is on Mary's side. Mark, he doesn't give much attention to the birth, Jesus' birth, but he tells us all about the ministry of Jesus. And then you have John, who gives us a different perspective than Matthew and Luke has given. In fact, he gives us a perspective from his life. Now, I want you to imagine that out of all the apostles, John is the youngest. And he writes his books, he writes John, he writes his Gospels, he writes Revelation, he writes them when he's older in life. So he's looking at it from a perspective, not of it happening now in, in, in a chronological order, but he's looking at it at the way that it affected his life. Now, he's not talking about a philosophy of Jesus, but he's talking about the influence of Jesus upon his own life personally. Don't you love that? Amen. Thank God for the way Matthew and Mark do it. Thank God for, uh, for the way that, uh, or sorry, Matthew and Luke do it. Thank God for the way that Mark, he gives the details. But John, he does it in such a way, amen, uh, that it's more than just religious. And it's more than just historical. But he tells it in a way that says, let me tell you what happened to me because I know Jesus. Amen. And that's kind of the way John does it. Let me tell you what happened to me because, Brother Eli, I know Jesus. And I almost feel like, Brother Justin, this is the way I want to present Jesus Christ. I know about it religiously. I know about it historically. But, Sister, God, let me tell you about him, what he has done for me, and how it affected me. Amen. So that's what John is doing as he presents the beginning of his gospel. John, uh, 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 he called, uh, uh, when, when, when John uh, called uh, Jesus the Word, uh, he, he was bringing Christianity to a new dimension. 
Now, some folks will tell you that, that, that John was trying to bring uh, Christianity and uh, African philosophy together. Probably, from what I have researched and read, John didn't even know much about African philosophy. So he was just presenting it in such a way that he was showing that uh, this is the experience that I have with God. And I want to tell you about the Word, the Logos, the One whose name is Jesus. And in the beginning was the Word, and it was with God, and it was God. Aren't you glad for truth? So everything we read throughout the Gospels... It's Word from God. It is Logos. It is God's Word. You look at Jesus and His birth. You follow Him at, while He's an adolescent. There He is in the temple. You follow Him throughout those three and a half years of His ministry. It's God speaking. God speaking. Don't we all want to hear from God? Amen. So Christmas is about a Word. From God. How many of you believe that this Christmas season, you don't need to raise your hand, but how many of you believe that this Christmas season, God can give you a word? I believe in that. I believe in the Logos. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in the written Word of God. I believe that the Spirit of God can give you a word. Amen. A word from God. And so John says, that even before Bethlehem, the Word existed because the Word is God. And John believed that Jesus was the Son of God. And so because Jesus is the Son of God, He's always been there. And John said that Jesus has authority because He is God. Let me tell you how much authority that He has is because God created everything. And nothing exists without God's handiwork and God speaking it. And John said this. He said, I want you to look back at Genesis and see where God spoke and it was. You talk about a word, Brother Craig, where God Almighty begins to speak and where there is nothing, now there is something. And Brother Justin, where there is only darkness, now there is light and darkness. Amen. God speaks and He gives light and, and the greater light rules the day and the lesser light rules the night. Amen. God spoke for the walk that was done. He began to speak and name the stars and they were. He spoke and where there was water, now there's land. He began to speak and then there was and out of all creation, and then with his hands, he formed man. Amen. Amen. Begin to look around you. Amen. See all the glory and all the beauty. Amen. That was God speaking. It happened because God spoke. You may say, well, Brother Seville, we have, we have the, the McAdam roads down here on 209 because man created whoa, 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 wait a second. They only have the knowledge and they only have the resources because God spoke first. And so John is saying, do you understand the power of the Son of God that is born in Bethlehem? You see, you see Him being born and in your mind, you imagine a beginning. There is a birthday. That is what we know in our life. But oh no, this John's different. This may be the day that He was born, but He has always been. And His Word has authority because He is the Word. That amazes me tonight. Jesus was in the beginning with God. The Bible says, and things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made. Our environment all around us is because of God. Our lives are because of God. Let's just say that everything that we know tonight is because of God's Spirit. It didn't happen by chance. It didn't happen by evolution. It happened because God spoke. And God worked. The Bible says that He is the source of life. Do you realize that life comes from God? Listen, I had folks say, well, they were, they were not a, a planned pregnancy. They are not a planned baby. Well, do you know that life came because God and uh, I've, I've witnessed before some parents, they say to their children, you were not planned. 
I really personally feel that that's a good way to speak to your child. Uh, because uh, every child has a purpose and a plan. Although it wasn't your plan, it was God's plan. And so every life tonight is here because God planned life. We are totally dependent upon Him. In Him was life and the light, and the life was the light of men. You know, men will try to explain life away in a very natural way. But life is nothing natural about it. It's the supernatural. God has given and God sustains life. Everybody knows there must be a source, but where is the source? Christmas tells us the source. And in Him was life and the light of man. Christmas is the source. And Christmas is our resource. It's the source tonight. Mary delivered the baby. The angels. The wise men came. There was the originator of life. And as much as Herod wanted to destroy it, you can't put the light out here because there is life and there is light in a baby boy born in Bethlehem. And the light is still shining brighter, even brighter than the star that the wise man followed. See, tradition says that John was ministering in Ephesus. And there in Ephesus, they worshipped the goddess Diana. Uh, their, uh, uh, their goddess that was there, they felt like it was a stone, uh, Diana, that was dropped out of heaven. And that's how they worshipped her. That It was a gigantic stone. It was a virgin goddess. And so they, they, stay, they, they, they stayed around her. They bowed. And they, uh, they proclaimed her to be God. But she was dead. She was only a stone. And so John was trying to say to them, You worship a dead, cold stone. But I want to tell you about a God who is alive. And a God who is warm. And a God who has life. Amen. And His name is Jesus. Amen. He is the Logos. He has always been. Amen. You worship a God who has no originator. But let me tell you about a God who we can go back and we find that there is no eternity beginning nor will there be an eternity end for Him. He is Jesus Christ. He is the Logos of the living Word of God. Amen. The light, the life is the source of light for humanity. In Him, the Bible says, was life, and the life, uh, the light was uh, the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. What is darkness? Darkness is our sin. It doesn't comprehend. It doesn't understand uh, Jesus Christ. Do you know why many uh, it, it, it troubles us? Uh, they want to call it Xmas. They want to call uh, the, the winter holiday season. They want to do away with Jesus Christ. You know why? Because they're living in darkness and their mind cannot apprehend and comprehend the light of who Jesus is. Amen. But thank God that He breaks through the darkness because you know what happens in darkness for the Nothing. There's no life. Put a plant in darkness for a while. Put a person in darkness. Total darkness. You know what happens? Death. But when the light has come, it is life. John went on now to say the Word was made flesh. God in flesh. That's who was born in the stable. God in flesh is the one who taught by the Sea of Galilee. God in flesh is the one who faced controversy at Jerusalem over religious uh, power. God in flesh is the one who died upon the cross in God in flesh. 
is the one who was raised from the dead. The Bible says, John says, that it was the glory of God. Many people claim that Jesus is not the Son of God. That He's just a good example to be followed. Listen, uh, anyone can be a good example. But only one can be full of glory and grace and merit and favor and truth. And that's Jesus Christ. More than a good example. He was God Almighty. It's not just a beautiful story. It's the reality that God came down to dwell among us. See, for many people, they'll put a star on top of their Christmas tree. That's the only thing that will be shining at Christmas. When everything else burns out, He will still be shining brightly because He's life and He is light. In the beginning was the Word. I need to tell you Sister Beth will come to the piano tonight. John said in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. And the Bible says that John went on to say, And there was a man sent from God, whose name was John, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe he was not the light. He was sent to bear witness of that light. This Christmas, let's not be a Christmas tree that's decked and ornamented in light. Let's not worry about putting the lights across the eve of our house. Or let's not worry about having the biggest, fanciest light display in our yard. But let's be like John. He said, I don't, say, I don't want to historically prove God. I don't want to religiously prove God. But I want to experience. And by my experience, I want to radiate the light of God. Brother Wally, this Christmas, I want Jesus Christ to shine through me. And the deeds I do words that I say in the life that I live, I want to be a reflector of the light. Brother Doug, I'm not the Son. He is the Son of God. But you and I, we can be the moon and we can reflect the sun. Because He is life and He is light. I truly believe that everybody here tonight, you've experienced Jesus as being life and life more abundantly. And you know what it's like to walk in the light and not in darkness. And the challenge to us is that we will be reflectors of the light. Let me read on for just a few moments. That was the true light which lighteth every man who comes into the world. Whoever finds Jesus Christ will become a light of His. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew it not. Can you imagine there's going to be a lot of homes that will have a lot of presents this Christmas? There'll be a lot of parties, and there'll be a lot of celebrating. But all Christ asks for is to come in to the world that He created. But I'm afraid it'll be like it was at the end. I'm sorry, but there's no room.
let's not let that be us this Christmas. That there's no room for life and light. But let's be a reflector of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Tonight I pray that you're challenged. And so with that challenge, would you come and would you find a place of prayer and say, God, let me be a reflector of the light. Don't expect everyone to understand it, Brother Wally, because they won't. They, they apprehended not the light. They comprehended. They didn't want it. They tried to cover it up. They may try to cover your light. But I want you to know something. They may stop your words. They may restrict some things. But they can't stop the light. It'll still shine through if you allow it. Would you come and fuel your lamp? Would you come and trim your wick and brighten your flame tonight? He is the light, and He has led us.